We're talking to Dr. Julian Black here, and the topic is the Constitution, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th Amendments. And of course, Dr. Black here, let, uh, let us give you uh, time now to uh, talk about uh, some aspects of uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, however you wish to handle it over the next uh, eight or 10 well, minutes that we have here. If you recall, when I talked about the 13th Amendment, we talked about what it takes to be free. Well, that's one uh, uh, element mm -hmm. to determine freedom in the English-speaking country. There's another element, and that is the ability to participate mm -hmm. in a decision-making process yeah. mm -hmm. that affects the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you recall, that, that right is the, one of the primary reasons for the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you recall that you got Patrick Henry, a person from South Carolina, mm -hmm. owned more slaves than you could count, Okay. on thousands of acres of land, mm -hmm. he was by every criteria extremely rich man. Every, every but criteria. E but mm -hmm. even he said, mm -hmm. give me liberty give or give me <laughs> death. <laughs> right. All right. In other words, money is not even important. Uh, uh -huh. What's important is taxation without Without representation. representation. Uh -huh. What's important is, is for an English parliament to make decisions that he could not participate mm -hmm. in, but it was still impacted upon the quality mm -hmm. of his life. Mm -hmm. Thus, when slaves were freed, you had to have the 50th Amendment to give them the right to vote, because mm -hmm. that's the only way in this Republican democracy mm -hmm. that we would have the right to participate mm -hmm. in the decision-making process. Not every day, mm -hmm. but at least on voting day. Mm -hmm. We would have the right to determine who the elected representatives will be. So it's through the ability mm -hmm. to vote that, that, that gives us the, the right to participate mm -hmm. in the decision-making process mm -hmm. that impacts upon the quality of our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have that right, mm -hmm. then you're not free, mm -hmm. you see. Now, equality, all slaves all right. were equal, mm -hmm. but none of them were free. So we need a Voters' Right Act. Mm -hmm. And the Voters' Right Act and, and the, uh, the uh, 50th Amendment mm -hmm. never was enabled. Okay. It took the enabling statute mm -hmm. to implement that constitutional right mm -hmm. in the passage of the 1965 Voters' mm -hmm. Right Act. Mm -hmm. Now we got some guarantees mm -hmm. that black people can vote and therefore can participate in the decision-making process mm -hmm. that impacts upon the quality of their lives, and now therefore they can be free. Mm -hmm. And so you say that the 15th Amendment was never enabled until 1965. Until the 16th Voting yeah. Right Act. Yeah. Why don't you elaborate upon that? Well, you can pass a constitutional amendment that. that establishes a right. All right. But then you got to have the legislative body to mm -hmm. implement that mm -hmm. right that has been established mm -hmm. by the passage of a law. Mm -hmm. We call that an enabling statute. Mm -hmm. There has to be some statute passed by Congress that will implement the right mm -hmm. that has already been established for black people to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now, until you have that enabling mm -hmm. statute, mm -hmm. you just got a right, mm -hmm. but there's nothing to implement mm -hmm. that right. And that didn't happen really until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Well, now, what impact, since we're talking about uh, voting, what impact did uh, this have on the disfranchisement movement in the southern parts of the United States? Uh, in well, the, uh, black 1890s? people could not participate in the decision-making process. Uh -huh. Therefore, they had no say-so as to who their elected representatives would be. Uh -huh. and that's why you have in number white sheriffs, uh -huh. white mayors, uh -huh. white representatives in government, uh -huh. and so forth and so forth and so on. Uh -huh. But as soon as black people had the right to, to participate in the decision-making process mm -hmm. by voting, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we got black males, mm -hmm. where heretofore we didn't have any. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden we got black sheriffs, where heretofore we didn't have any. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden we got John Lewis and all the other congressmen that are uh, uh, black mm -hmm. congressmen that represent various constituencies, mm -hmm. both in the South and in the North. Mm -hmm. We got even today a black person mm -hmm. running for the highest office of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have that enabling statute, mm -hmm. the Voters' Right Act of 1965, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this still wouldn't exist, mm -hmm. but the likelihood okay. of it being exist mm -hmm. will be lessened. Mm -hmm. You see, we, it, mm -hmm. it's remote. You know, sometimes folks talk about uh, uh, Congress' uh, ability to uh, uh, pass a, 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 a reinforcement of this law. I, I, and, and I, uh, I forget the name that they use. Uh, they, they were reinstating it. Yeah. Reinstating the, lo the, Reinst law, the, yeah. law, the law ordinarily expires uh -huh. upon a certain term. Uh -huh. And then we want to reinstate the law, uh -huh. make sure that it doesn't expire and uh -huh. keep it going and so forth uh -huh. and so on. That's already happened, uh -huh. so it's, it's still, it's still uh, in good stead. But now some people contend that even though Congress might not pass this law, 
that still Africans have the right to vote because the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. Well, I just told you. Yeah. If you don't have an enabling statute, uh -huh. you can have a right that, is, that there's no means or method by which it can be implemented. That's the reason why you have to have the statute. It, it, it's, it's not that passage every several years, and I forget the name of this law now, but it's not that passage uh, still that it's, it 1965 should be made, it should be made permanent. It should be made permanent. Mm -hmm. you know? Is that, is that yeah, not? My, is, my that, that, yeah, that was mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you know, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 mm -hmm. uh, was uh, interpreted by the Supreme Court during the case of a, 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 a Bush versus Gore mm -hmm. that allowed uh, Bush to become president of the United mm -hmm. States. Explain that. All right. Uh, one of the requirements of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 is that southern states primarily, mm -hmm. before they can uh, establish a voting plan mm -hmm. uh, and procedures as relates to voting, they must first get permission from the federal government mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, when you had the problem of recounting votes in Florida, the Supreme Court of Florida um, mm -hmm. ordered a recount and by doing so established some procedures mm -hmm. about which that recount can uh -huh. occur. Okay. But they didn't get the permission from the federal government to do, do so. So. Okay. so the Supreme Court said that the Voters' Right Act of 1965 was violated and then ordered the count to stop. Uh -huh. And by ordering the count to stop, Bush was ahead at the time, so he became president of the United States. <laughs> and so, yeah. that's, that's a real, that's and a real so that, slick. That's the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, that's, uh, that's a voters' right uh, act of 1965 uh, that which, implements which the, 15th. the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. But the point I'm showing you, mm -hmm. that the Voters' Right Act of 1965, that was primarily the result of trying to make sure the black people mm -hmm. can have the right to vote and participate in the decision-making process was used this time not to make black people mm -hmm. free, not to give black folks the right to vote, but, to but just to elect the president, president of the United, United States. States. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of your consequences uh -huh, uh -huh, of the law. Uh -huh. It can be different than what uh -huh, you uh, previously uh -huh. intended it, it uh -huh. for, for it to be. Uh -huh. and it can be used for all purposes. You know, over the last couple of minutes we have here, Dr. Blackshear, let's uh, see if you might be able to throw out some Those real slick, real, real, uh, real slick way of doing it. And so some suggestions in terms <laughs> of what we might do in order to make uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution much more of, uh, of, of, of a force in terms of our uh, system of education and well, one, make people knowledgeable well, well, one, of it. One, you don't have that many qualified teachers, in my judgment, on public school level mm -hmm. that are even teaching it. Mm -hmm. You got people teaching history and never educated in college to teach history. If they're teaching history, they're teaching history or, or civics or with the educational certificate attached to it. Mm -hmm. And so they, they teach these kids the simplistic notion, the 13th Amendment freed the slaves, mm -hmm. the 14th Amendment made them citizens, and the 15th mm -hmm. Amendment gave them the right to vote. Well, if you're not going to be any more comprehensive about that, mm -hmm. as far as the educational process mm -hmm. is concerned, on a high school level, mm -hmm. then uh, it, it's it's pretty understandable mm -hmm. why people can grow up and not really know what these mm -hmm. rights are mm -hmm. all about, but, 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 except by listening uh -huh. to your show. Uh, yeah, but, but one thing is clear, though, is that uh, that there are a large number of folks who are not voting now. And, and, and well, what that might be another again. reason for uh -huh. that, uh, mm -hmm. because they don't think that it's going to do them any good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know? Well, what could you say to somebody over the last minute and 30 uh, seconds in terms of participating in uh, the politics and, and, and the things from that perspective? Well, um, you know, if I, if I wanted to be, uh, if I want to sanitize the whole thing and reach back uh, so, so several hundred years, I could rely upon the founders of the American Revolution to say that that's one of the reasons why they fought, mm -hmm. because they didn't have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose if Parliament allowed them to have representation mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, I suppose if England, if England had yeah, allowed mm -hmm. the colonists to have representation in the, in the Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, you may not have had the revolution. revolution. But the, you remember the, the mantra? The call for arms was taxation without yeah, representation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe uh, people owe that to their ancestors. Mm -hmm. the, another reason, specifically like black people, mm -hmm. they are up to a, a vote because they ought to vindicate the loss of lives and limbs mm -hmm. on the part of their ancestors who were mm -hmm. lynched and killed and firebombed out of the houses for mm -hmm. wanting to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and now uh, having achieved this uh, uh, right, mm -hmm and not to use it because you're too lazy to get out of bed, mm -hmm. that's a affront to the struggles mm -hmm. uh, endured mm -hmm. by your own ancestors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's an obligation that you have to mm -hmm. your own history. Very good. 
And of course, uh, Dr. Blackshear, let me thank you over the last 10 seconds for the excellent information. And it's glad I to told be you here. before that uh, uh, this is this would be something that was new. All I have and now. of course, let me uh, thank our audience seconds, and encourage them to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.